remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Guilty. America's evil genius back with you once again. And yes, the George Zimmerman verdict has just come down as I tape this. Uh, the verdict was read out in Sanford, Florida, maybe around 15 minutes ago or so. And I wanted to very quickly get uh, out to you my reaction on this case. You know, I haven't really talked about the case much on this show. Uh, I think I talked about it very briefly about a year ago when it first happened. And I did a little presentation on stand your ground laws. But I didn't go into the, the case itself very much. And the reason I didn't do that at the time was because I actually wanted to let the process play out. I wanted to have the trial happen, if there, if there was going to be one, and uh, get the evidence and make my own decision in that time, and make my own mind up at that time. Well, that has happened at this point. We've seen the trial. It's gone from stem to stern, and we've seen all the evidence and uh, the testimony and everything else, and the verdict has come back not guilty. And I think that was the right verdict. I think that was the right verdict for the jury to come to after I've seen everything here. For the main reason being this. During this trial, George Zimmerman's guilt was never proven. And go back to fifth grade civics class, you know that in a criminal trial, it's incumbent upon the prosecution to prove guilt. It is not incumbent upon the defense to prove innocence. Well, guilt was never proven. Throughout the trial, there was never one chain of events that could ever really be established that said Zimmerman did this, Martin did this, and it, you, know, you could actually piece everything together where there was enough consistency from everybody's testimony that you could draw a timeline of events. That never really happened. It was much more of a he said, she said kind of a trial. There was one group of people who had certain recollections, another group of people who had other recollections, and you never could really figure out exactly what was real and what wasn't. The only thing even remotely clear was that at some point, Trayvon Martin was on top of George Zimmerman, MMA style, if you will, punching him or bashing his head into concrete, something like that. We know that happened. Now, there may be any number of theories and opinions and whatever else of what happened up to that point, but clearly, at some point, Trayvon Martin was on top of George Zimmerman pounding away. And to me, that was the key part of the case, in my estimation. Because no matter what George Zimmerman did to Trayvon Martin, or no matter what Trayvon Martin did to George Zimmerman, and for the record, I don't think that either one of them were angels on that evening, from what I can ascertain. But once you get to that point where Trayvon Martin is pounding away on George Zimmerman or bashing his head into concrete, and Zimmerman thinks his life is in danger, I cannot imagine any situation in which it's reasonable for the man in the defensive position about to lose his life to basically say, okay, go ahead and kill me. I can't see any scenario in which that's reasonable. Even if Zimmerman started the altercation, which is possible, though I don't know, even if he started the altercation, it was Martin who was on top of him and Zimmerman's life that was in danger. And I cannot, for the life of me, think of a reason that you would ever say to someone, well, you got to let him kill you. Not reasonable at all. I think for that reason, if nothing else, you had to acquit George Zimmerman. You know, from day one, I've looked at this trial through the lens of a homeowner. I own a home myself. I know a lot of you out there own your homes. And I was thinking of this from the perspective of what if this had happened in my neighborhood? What if George Zimmerman had been a, a neighborhood watch captain here on my street and encountered Trayvon Martin on my street? And as I said before, I don't think it was a good situation on either side. But looking back on it, I got to tell you, I would much rather have those who are tasked with protecting my life and my property, be it neighborhood watch guy, police officer, concerned neighbor, even myself protecting my property. I would rather have any of those people tasked with that not be under the expectation of second guessing themselves when they're in a life or death situation, when they're making a split second decision. They should never have to ask themselves, hey, I'm about to die. If I kill this guy, am I going to go to prison? You should never have to think of that. The law should always be on the side of the man defending his life and his property. And I think the way it's written, it generally is. But of course, it's a jury trial. You never know how those things are really going to play out. So I was pleasantly surprised to see this verdict come down as it did. But there's one more thing we got to talk about. 
And to me, I think maybe this is the, the biggest thing to talk about with this, the biggest takeaway from this trial. And that is the witch hunt that was perpetrated by the media. And yes, the Department of Justice under Eric Holder and Barack Obama. Quite frankly, the actions of those entities are nothing short of disgusting in this case. You know, when this first went to trial and I saw the first day or two of testimony, I'm thinking, man, this prosecution team, they must be awful. They can't try this case for nothing. I mean, they're putting these witnesses on the stand and the witnesses are sounding like they're the defense's witnesses, not the prosecution's witnesses. I thought, man, these must be some horrible lawyers. But then I remembered something from the very early days of this case. What I remembered was that initially the local authorities did not arrest George Zimmerman. The local authorities initially did not bring charges against George Zimmerman. The sheriff down there, I believe his name was Bill Lee. I'm, I may be incorrect in the last name, but I, I want to say it was Bill Lee. He opted not to arrest George Zimmerman. He was fired for doing so, by the way. And it made me think, okay, we've got a prosecution that is seemingly not able to try a case. We've got local authorities who evidently did not see enough evidence to bring charges to begin with. Gee, maybe there was never a case against George Zimmerman at all. And maybe the only reason this ever came to trial is because the media went down to Florida and raised a big stink about it where no sh such stink should have happened. And maybe it's because the Department of Justice went down there with their rabble-rousing tactics and that community organizer garbage that Obama and Holder, that background they come from of community agitation and the Department of Justice runs all these rallies in favor of Trayvon Martin and they ginned up a lot of, I don't want to say stupid people, but a lot of impressionable people. We'll put it that way. They ginned up a lot of impressionable people to think there was a problem where no problem existed. And I would ask this question to the media, to the Department of Justice, to Eric Holder, and to Barack Obama. Just what in the hell did you get for your efforts? What was the result? You took an innocent man, George Zimmerman, and you arrested him. You took an innocent man, George Zimmerman, and you put his life through a living hell for the better part of a year. You took the family of Trayvon Martin, who, yes, I do have sympathy for, because to bury your own child, I can't imagine the grief that must be present with that. But you took the family of Trayvon Martin, and you forced them to relive that nightmare by perpetrating a trial that never should have happened to begin with. And all for what? Because you were hell-bent to make Martin some kind of martyr? Because you were hell-bent to convince the American people there's some sort of problem with white-on-black violence that really does not exist in any meaningful degree? Because you just couldn't stand to get through your tenure in office without proving the bizarre and twisted worldview that you have that young minority men are somehow disadvantaged simply because they're young and minority. Bullshit! You know it's bullshit, and now the American people know it's bullshit. It has been proven! And for that, the media, the Department of Justice, and this godforsaken administration has some answering to do. You need to be called on the carpet for this. You waste the taxpayer money for a media circus of a trial that never should have happened to begin with. Shame on you. Why didn't you let the local authorities do their job, which it has been proven they did quite well. Oh, and they got fired for doing so. On behalf of America, across this fruited plain, on behalf of all of the law enforcement officials and prosecuting attorneys around the country. If I might be so bold, I'd like to speak for them for a moment. On behalf of all of them, I would like to say to you, Barack Obama, Eric Holder, Department of Justice, liberal media, I would like to say this. Stay the hell out of our business! But for all that's gone on,
for the circus it was, I am glad to see justice was served tonight. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time. Yeah,